My dad came to my apartment with toys for two young kids. I do not have any kids. What is going on everyone and welcome to Redditor Extra, the home of the very best relationship stories on YouTube. Today I've got for you one amazing story with a really sad update after a year. Before we get into it, make sure to drop a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thank you, by the way, for the amazing feedback on the first two videos. We're almost up to a thousand subscribers already at the time of recording. Here we go. Original post, March 5th, 2024. Long time lurker, first time posting. I am coming to you, the brains of Reddit that always find some angle I never considered because my dad did something so wild yesterday and I'm spinning myself in circles about it. I'm trying to settle on an answer, but nothing really adds up. I'll break it down as thoroughly as I can, but my family has enough drama that it could fill 10 novels, so I'll be very to the point about it. So I will reiterate again, that I do not have any kids and am not married. I have never been married, never even moved in with a man. Here are the people I can think of that might be involved in this somehow. I have one brother, 27M, and one sister, 22F. Brother is in a long-term relationship with a nice woman, but they're both not interested in kids right now. Sister still lives at our mum's house, no kids, no long-term partner. My parents are divorced and my mum remarried, dad stayed single. He lives with my uncle, an uncle's wife. Stepdad is fine. They got married after I was out of the house. Sister reports that they're normal and beige together. He has no kids and has never met my dad anyways, so his family can be removed from the equation. Here's what happened. I have a trashy, low-rent apartment about 45 minutes away from my dad's house. It's on the third floor, and you have to walk into the apartment building and up flights of stairs to reach my door. Yesterday, around 6pm, my dad knocks on my apartment door. I wasn't expecting him, so when I answered, I was confused but pleasantly surprised. I greeted him normally, and he gave me a side hug because he had a few toy boxes in his hands, like Fisher-Price toys for really young kids, even babies. I didn't say anything about them because I had no reason to assume they were for me, like I just didn't even register them in my brain. He looked totally normal. He wasn't breathing weird, wasn't sweaty, his pupils weren't huge, Nothing was off with him visually. When we hugged, I didn't smell anything weird. No alcohol or smoke or anything. But my face wasn't too close to him. I said I was happy he dropped by, but why is he here? He said he was in the area shopping when saw these toys, which he then held up for me proudly and wanted to give them to the girls. I said, who? And he gave me two names I didn't recognize. I remember my brain sorting through the roller decks of everyone I've ever met in our family Terminator style and nobody matched. As I'm standing there trying to match the names to any kids I knew of, he peeks over my shoulder into the apartment and asks if the kids are here or if they're with Mike. Again, who is that? Apparently, it's my husband. I must have been radiating confusion since now my dad is looking just as confused as I am but still keeping up a good mood kind of vibe. I tell him I am not married and have no kids. At first, he insisted I did, and when I reiterated that he just kind of shook his head. At this point, I'm getting really concerned. Is my dad lost? Confused? Is he having some kind of breakdown? I ask my dad if he knows where he is. He starts to get frustrated really quickly and confirms that, yes, he knows where he is and who I am. I start to ask him questions that I've seen in movies like, do you know what time it is? Or the year? And he just gets more and more angry. He starts shouting at me right in my face, yelling, You think this is funny? And are you trying to make me look stupid? There's bubbles of spit in the corners of his mouth. He went from 0-100 so fast, it genuinely kind of scared me. And I just retreated a bit into my apartment. When I backed away, he took it as a personal offense and started screaming, Oh, now you're scared. You're scared of me. He storms off, literally stopping his feet like a child down the hallway. I thought about chasing him, but he was so irate that I didn't think it was a smart move whole interaction was less than five minutes. I closed and locked my door and immediately start making phone calls. Called my mum, uncle and siblings. Nobody has any idea what just happened. I did ask my mum and sister if I was the crazy one and did have children I just forgot about. They confirmed I certainly didn't. Uncle says that dad left the house around 4pm to run errands in my area, so that part was true. I told him what happened and he said he'd try to figure out what's going on and would call with updates. It's tomorrow morning and I haven't heard anything back. I spent all night trying to figure this out. Here are my theories. 
He has another kid somewhere that none of us know about and that kid is married with two kids. But if that's true, why my apartment? Did he confuse me with his other hidden kid? He confirmed he knew where he was, so I'm not sure. Did he drive here on autopilot? He'd have to get out of his car and walk all the way up here though, which should have been enough time to snap out of it. The anger might have come from him realizing what he'd done and panicking, but it would have been so easy to make up a lie about what happened. He had some kind of mental breakdown. This was my first thought, but he looked and acted so normal. He drove out here and went to a store and purchased items without issue, so he must have been in decently sound mind to do that. Maybe he was somewhere else in his mind. I considered the idea that he was maybe in the past and thought I was someone else, but again, he confirmed where he was and who I was, and I didn't recognize any of the names as anyone in our family. He did this on purpose for some reason. I have no idea why he would do this. Our whole family loves to stir the pot, but this is extreme and makes him look bad, which is out of character. If he were to manufacture drama, he'd want to make himself look good, so this would be a drastic switch in his dramatics. Maybe sympathy? Maybe he's going to play this up as some kind of stress breakdown. As far as I know, his job doesn't squeeze him too much. He's had the same position for years and was pretty happy with it. The most he complained about was having to work overtime every once in a while. He's developing dementia. I know early onset dementia could be the cause, but he's just barely 50. Yeah, he's getting older, but not that old and he's never shown any signs of cognitive failure up until this exact point this is a huge escalation from nothing if anyone else has any idea what is happening here please share uncle has yet to call me back and my siblings can't get through to my dad's phone i think it's dead i left a voicemail and texts on my uncle's line but who knows if he's seen them i don't have any authority in his life the only one that does is my brother and he lives in another state, so it's not like he can help much. What the F happened to my dad? Relevant comments. Is he on a new medication? I don't think my dad has started any new medication, but he might have and just didn't tell me. I didn't ask about meds, so maybe this is it. But wouldn't I have noticed some kind of physical sign of something wrong in his brain? He looked and acted normal until he exploded and started screaming at me. Your dad needs to see a doctor as soon as he possibly can. Agreed, but I really don't know how to make him go. I don't have any medical authority over him, and I think calling the police would be a bad move that would destroy any trust he has in me. Like having him dragged to a hospital after a mental breakdown has to be bad for his mental state, right? Someone suggests calling the police for a welfare check. Commenter, calling the police on someone for a wellness check is a good way to get them killed if you live in Alabama. But this is also a large reason I haven't called yet. We're not white. And with how angry my dad got, I'm worried that he'll end up in a jail cell and not a hospital bed. Or worse, he'll just be shot. But if my uncle doesn't get back to me by tonight, I think this is my only option. Can you drive over to their house? I can drive over to his house, which is my next move if my uncle just refuses to get in contact with me. When I first called him, he said he was going to handle it which I trusted since he's in such close proximity to my dad, but now that he's basically ghosting me, I think I'll have to handle it myself. Comment four hours later. Where is dad now? I have no idea. My siblings and I have been calling his phone, but it goes straight to voicemail, so it must be dead. I've called my uncle 20 times since this morning, and he's still not getting back to me. If there's nothing by the time I finish work, I'm going to break down his freaking door because my dad could literally be dying, and my uncle is just not talking to me update post march 7th 2024 two days later hi everyone i wanted to wait until i had more information to post an update but a lot of people were seriously worried about my dad and i so i wanted to let everyone know what happened i finally found my dad my uncle took him to the hospital the night of the incident and was for reasons i'll get to ignoring our calls and texts Anyone who bet on head injury and drugs, you're correct. You can cash out your chips at the front counter, haha. Ha. There was no second family, I wish there was. My dad would just be in drama-related trouble and not medical trouble. He's got a massive concussion and serious brain damage. Doctors don't know how he managed to even drive to my apartment safely. They think he was on autopilot since he takes that freeway nearly every day. The Phantom Kids are his co-workers. 
His brain somehow blended the details of his co-worker's life into his own. Co-worker has a daughter who is married and has two kids and the memories of being told about the girls mashed together with memories of his own daughter. Doctor says this is pretty common with head injuries. My uncle did find my dad and take him to the hospital. He did drive out to my area and scour the place looking for my dad and eventually found his car outside Walmart around 10 p.m. Couldn't find him outside, but did find him out behind the building harassing an employee for a cigarette. He grabbed my dad and kind of dragged him into the car and took him to the hospital. He just decided not to update anyone because he didn't want to stress us out. I don't believe him at all. I think my uncle is responsible for what happened to my dad and was avoiding us out of guilt. After I posted here, I went to work and once I was clocked out, I went to my dad slash uncle's place. Dad and uncle's cars were gone. Only my aunt's was there. I went and knocked, but nobody answered. People in my last post mentioned carbon monoxide poisoning and I was kind of freaking out thinking my aunt was just freaking dead inside. So I went around the house testing the doors and windows to see if I could get in. The back door was unlocked, so I just let myself inside and looked around. Totally empty. I even checked underneath the beds since a couple people mentioned my dad could be paranoid or scared and hiding. My aunt has this giant purse and it wasn't there, which confirmed to me that she was probably with my uncle. I went back and sat in my car and started calling any hospitals and jails that came up on Google Maps. Nobody had any answers and just said he wasn't there. I even called the cops for a wellness check just to see if maybe they could call around hospitals and get a different answer, but I waited until 11 p.m. ish and literally nobody came. No police, no family, nobody. I drive back home and try to get some sleep. Next day, I call out of work and spend the day driving around my area trying to find my dad. Couldn't track him down, so I start calling hospitals again. There's three in my area, and while two of them gave me no, he's not here, sorry. One of them got really nervous over the phone and said, I'm not supposed to give out patient information. I got suspicious. Kept asking, and she just got more and more flustered. Hung up and drove my butt over there and saw my uncle's car in the parking lot. It was kind of late, the sun was down, but I wasn't keeping track of time, so there were only like five cars in the visitor area, and his was one of them. I do not have words to describe what I was feeling, but it was mostly just rage. Like, what the frick? Hello, he's been here the whole time? I went in and tried to get the receptionist to let me see my dad. She didn't really want to let me, and I'm not proud of it, but I started freaking out. I slammed my hands on the desk, screamed, knocked over a magazine rack. I guess my tantrum made someone go talk to my uncle and aunt since she came out to the waiting room and told the receptionist it was fine to let me through. If she didn't look so tired and sad, I was going to maul her. But the look on her face made me calm down, if you can call it that. Long story short, she took me to my dad's room. He looked terrible. None of you know my dad, but he's a beast. He's 5'11 with massive smile lines and bright, shining eyes. He's my dad, so I'm biased, but he's always so full of life. Laying in that hospital bed, he looked dead already. Sunken eyes, lifeless and droopy face. He looked empty. I was able to talk to him for a bit, but he was totally out of it. He had to be reminded who I was several times and kept forgetting where he was and why he was here. Just like my dad, when I get upset, I get angry. I practically dragged my uncle out of the room and into the hallway for an explanation. After like 20 minutes of him making excuses and beating around the bush, another reason I think he's guilty, he told me what happened. Apparently, Monday morning, my dad fell getting out of his car and cracked his head really hard against the driveway. He got up and everyone thought he was fine, so they just went inside the house as normal. After a while, he had a headache, so they gave him a couple prescription painkillers to ease the pain. Apparently, that worked, so they just let him continue his day as normal. They only got concerned when I called and told my uncle what happened. He kept being so weird and evasive that I know there's more, but I couldn't wring his stupid freaking neck in the hospital hallway, so I just let it go. Here's what I think happened. I know my uncle and dad. And I know the history of this stupid family like the back of my hands. I think my dad and uncle got in a fight over something and dad was either pushed down or hit in the head by my uncle. The altercation gets resolved somehow and they go back to normal, but my dad's head still hurts. I learned at the hospital from the doctor that there were enough painkillers in his body to numb a horse. So I suspect my aunt and uncle just kept feeding him painkillers so they wouldn't need to take my dad to the hospital and admit what they did. 
I pressed my aunt about the painkillers, and she eventually halfway admitted that they weren't exactly allowed to have them at all. I suspect she bought them off someone else. They're likely addicted, and I just didn't know. I'm almost 100% sure this is their fault. If they had taken my dad to the hospital as soon as he hit his head, he would probably be okay. I'm staying at the hospital now, and my aunt and uncle have left. Doctor says to not get my hopes up about my dad, but when doctors say that, it always means he'll actually be okay, right? That's how it always goes. They tell you that your family member probably won't make it, but they always prove them wrong. I'm sorry, but the rest of this is just going to be venting. You know what really gets me? I could handle all this. I could understand it. My uncle and aunt have always been less than reliable. I can believe that this could come from them. The hardest part is the lack of concern from literally anyone but me. I had to blackmail my brother, drama from a year ago, to even get him to agree to fly out. My mum doesn't care. Dad's family doesn't care. My sister kind of cares, but she doesn't really want to help or even come support me in the hospital with him. I am just so shocked that I'm the only mother fuffer here for my dad and he doesn't even know who I am right now. I have to take time off work, but it's not like my job gives me PTO. Why am I the only one dealing with this? My brother is the only one of us with time and money to help fix this and I had to threaten him just to get him to come back home. I wish I had chased my dad when he left my apartment. I was afraid of him, but I'm even more afraid now. My dad is probably going to die and I trusted the idiot who killed him with helping him. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with everyone? Why doesn't anyone give a dang about my dad? Why doesn't anyone give a dang about me? I could have been a better daughter to him. I could have visited more, called more, involved him in things more. I could have chased him when he left my apartment. I might have gotten hurt, but I would rather be beaten to a pulp rather than be sitting in a hospital room with my unconscious and probably dying father. I'm so freaking stupid. I'm sorry, dad. Relevant comments. Any chance your dad and aunt were having an affair and your uncle caught them? This is a heavily downvoted comment. I don't know. Maybe they were having an affair, but I doubt it. My dad and uncle have been in physical fights pretty regularly since childhood. It's their go-to solution for literally anything. When I was a kid, I watched my dad reel back and punch my uncle in the chest for stealing a lighter. My guess is something equally stupid happened and they fought like they usually do, but they're getting up in years and can't take the kind of punishment they used to. Comment exchange. Commenter. I know you're hurting, but please stop threatening hospital employees. They're just trying to do their job. OP. I only yelled at the receptionist and I apologized later after I had cooled down. I'm not mad at the doctors or nurses. I'm mad at my uncle and aunt and pretty much everyone else. The only people who seem to care about my dad at all are the hospital staff, and I'm really grateful for them. I promise I'm being as nice and understanding as physically possible and apologizing when my tone gets a little too harsh. Talk to the police or start with a hospital social worker. A social worker did come talk to me after my uncle left, but it didn't seem like they were listening. I'll try and get someone to talk to me again, since I'm sure my dad wasn't slamming painkillers like candy on his own. Calling the cops on your uncle is totally justified, especially because of the painkillers. He could be on the hook for homicide. 100% think this is why they waited so long and pumped him full of painkillers. They hoped it would just go away and even when they brought him here, they kept everyone in the dark about it, hoping the doctors would just magically fix him and everyone could go home and forget about it. Did the doc give any medical terminology for his condition? Kind of, I told him to dumb it down for me since I have no medical knowledge at all. I'm a line cook at Denny's FFS, but he said massive concussion, brain damage, nerve damage, and cell death. He then said it's pretty bad and I shouldn't get my hopes up for recovery. He looked like he was about to throw up telling me that, so I'm going to assume my dad probably won't last long. Try to give yourself kindness and grace. This isn't your fault. Thank you. I'm really trying to remind myself I did everything I could, but it feels like I could have done more. It always feels like that though. No matter what you do, it feels like it's not good enough in the face of something like this. I talked to the social worker here and they didn't seem like they were listening, but I'll push harder when they come back around again. Did the doc say your dad's injury was consistent with a fall? I did ask if my uncle's story lined up with my dad's head, but the doctor just said it was an impact wound. Whatever that means, he couldn't confirm or deny anything. And I totally understand that. He's not a cop and can't really tell me anything about that. Update comment four, hours later. On this, a couple cops just came to talk to me and get a statement. 
They seemed to be taking me seriously and took my contact info. I told them everything about what happened when dad came to my apartment and what my uncle said and how I didn't believe him and gave my version of things. Tried to give as much context as I could. I think they believed me, but who knows? They said they'd come around again soon. I'm not really sure what happens from here, but I'll be pressing for more information when they come back. OP then answers a comment asking about family dynamics and if her siblings hate her dad for some reason. It's not integral to the post, but does contain helpful information, so I'm including it here. I'll try and answer this as best I can, but it's long and complicated. There aren't any saints here. Even my siblings and myself aren't completely innocent. Mum and dad were married up until the recession in 2008. I think the divorce came around 2010, but I can't remember exactly. Up until the economy crashed, their marriage was fine, but then bills got higher and their pay got lower and they went from never fighting about anything to fighting about money, who spent it, why they were spending it, if it was worth it, etc. I remember a pretty massive fight about my dad smoking more cigarettes than he was allowed when they were too broke to buy enough for both of them. Money fights never really get resolved. They just fizzle out until the next one. There was never violence from my dad, but my brother says he once saw my mum open hands smack my dad across the face during an argument. Knowing my mum, I highly doubt she did it for funsies, and I'm sure my dad said something to earn such an extreme reaction, but I wasn't there and didn't see it. My dad was pretty selfish during this time and would buy stuff for himself when mum and aunt needed that money more. It was only little things, but it adds up. An energy drink here, an extra pack of smokes there, a new pocket knife or hat, whatever little thing he needed to not kill himself. They were both so broke during the divorce that there wasn't really anything to split, just us kids. Mum got us in the divorce and my dad just kind of drifted off for most of my teens. He turned into the phones work both ways kind of dad, but he did turn up at events and holidays so he wasn't totally absent. It hit my brother pretty hard and I do remember him crying late at night asking why our dad didn't love him anymore. He's my dad's only son and he got a lot of special father-son time when dad was still living in the house. Mum didn't make it easy for dad to see us though. She insisted that if he wanted to see us, he needed to take us somewhere. And when you're broke, taking three kids out for dinner or a movie is tough. I know he tried, but I also know he could have tried harder. Mum took every opportunity to trash on him for being broke, but we were broke too, so it always had that stink of spite, but still got in our heads anyways. My sister doesn't really even remember our dad living at home, so her attachment to him is pretty minimal. My brother remembers, but also carries that resentment about dad just kind of floating away from him and never rekindling that special bond they had. Dad bummed around on some couches until he landed a job and rented a townhouse in a decent area. I think I was around 17 when that happened. Brother was already out of the house by that time, and I was already on my way out. But I did go over there a few times, and it seemed like dad was really getting his life back together. He called us more, had us over more, made an effort. Eventually, something happened with the townhouse. I suspect rent became too much for him, since the area went from nice to rich white people nice, and he moved in with my aunt and uncle. Effort pretty much stopped after that. From what I know about my dad, I think he was ashamed that he was poor again and didn't want his kids seeing him like that. I kept in touch with him, but my brother gave up after he moved states, and my sister never really had much contact with him in the first place. Nobody really won or lost there. My mum did all right for herself. She actually owns her house, which is something none of us really expected to happen in our family. We've always been below the poverty line, and owning a house is a huge deal. There's tons more drama, but this is the basics. Wow, there we go. No doubt one of the saddest stories I've read in a long time. There's, there's nothing that can be said, really. Dementia is, in my opinion, one of the most sad diseases out there. I mean, you're just seeing the person that you love just become less and less of the person that you've known your entire life each and every day. How tragic is that? What did make me laugh is when OP said that they asked their mum and sister if they were the crazy one and they did actually have kids that they forgot about. Um, no, I mean, yeah, th they didn't. But also, I don't know. I I'm only laughing a little bit because it is ultimately very, very sad. I mean, just the way this all happened as well is just ultimately much more sad than if it had happened naturally too. I, I have to look at like the aunt and uncle and just say, why not take your dad to the hospital sooner? Like they could have saved him. They really could. For OP, I hope you get some some form of therapy and some, some proper emotional support because I think you're probably going to need it. But yeah, 
best of luck to you and um thanks for writing the story anyway guys that is gonna do it for this one really hope you enjoyed it once again if you are new to the channel and haven't already done so make sure to subscribe if you want more content from me more relationship drama check out this video on screen and thanks for all the nice feedback in the comments by the way it's very much appreciated i'll catch you all tomorrow with some more reddit content